All right, everyone, this is a video for graphs section two. In this video, I'll give an overview of the topic. I'll then go through the worksheet and finally, I will answer the questions that are on the worksheet. The description box below gives a link to my Instagram page. On here, you can find images of the worksheet as well as the answer sheet and other bits and bobs. In graphs section one, I introduced you to graphs and how to take a straight line equation and plot it on a graph. In this video, we're doing the reverse. So we're given a straight line equation on a graph and we're working out what the equation for that straight line is. To do this, we need to learn three things. First, we need to learn what an equation for a straight line looks like. Second, we need to learn about something called a gradient or slope of a line and how to find it. And third, we need to learn what the y-intercept is of a straight line and how to find it. Remember, the reason why we're learning all this is so that we don't always have to, you know, write equations, write symbols and write letters with maths. It's important to be able to visualise maths because visualising maths helps us learn it and helps us understand it. And, and that's what we're like doing here. We're learning how to take sort of written maths and transform it to visual maths. It's a bit like the difference between books and films. Sometimes you're happy to read a book, you can use your mind and imagination to visualize that story. Whereas other times you want to see that story in all its color and sound glory through a film. These sections are allowing you to take maths out of your mind and imagination and see it like films take stories out of books onto the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, this is the worksheet for graphs section two. On this worksheet, we'll go over what an equation for a straight line looks like, what the gradient and y-intercept of a straight line are and how to find them, and then finding the equation for straight lines. Let's jump into the first section. Equation for a straight line. If you see a straight line on a graph, the equation of that line will look like this. y is equal to mx plus c. Every straight line can be described by an equation of this form. Similarly, if you see an equation of this form, you know that when this equation is drawn on a graph, it is a straight line. This is a really important equation, and so it's definitely one to remember. Like, I still use it when I was doing my master's in maths. Really important. Definitely learn it. Now, usually when you see this equation, the M and the C will be numbers. Their values tell you something about the straight line. C here is the y-intercept. It tells us where the straight line crosses the y-axis. If we just look at this graph down here, the y-intercept of this red line here is minus three because this line crosses the y-axis at minus three. The y-intercept of this blue line is zero because this blue line crosses the y-axis at the point zero. So we know what C is. C tells us where the line crosses the y-intercept. What about M? M is the gradient of a straight line. So it tells us about the slope or steepness, if you want to call it that, of the line. Again, looking at this graph below, if we look at this blue line first, this line has a positive gradient of one, i.e. M is equal to one. If we were to increase the value of M, our gradient would get steeper, i.e. if M was to increase this line would begin to get steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. That's what happens when you increase M. So for instance, this yellow line here has a steeper gradient than this blue line here, i.e. the value for M of this line will be bigger than the value of M for this line. If we were to decrease the value of M, then our line would become less steep, i.e. it would be shallower. So decreasing the value of M, our line would become shallower, i.e. it would go down and down as m is decreasing this line is getting shallower and shallower and shallower so for instance this red line here this has a gradient that is much smaller than this blue line here because you can see this red line is much shallower the steepness of this line is quite small compared to the steepness of this blue line now as i said this blue line has a positive gradient of 1, i.e. m is 1. What if we made it negative? If we make the value of m negative, our line would flip 90 degrees, e.g. our slope would be decreasing from left to right rather than increasing from left to right. So again, if we take our blue line and if we make the gradient of this line negative, it will look like the following. There we go. 
that blue line has flipped. So the line is now decreasing from left to right instead of increasing from left to right. This has a negative gradient. So there's just a few examples of different gradients and how as gradients change, the steepness or slope of lines change. Let's move on to the next section. The gradient formula. We can find the value of m, which is the gradient of a straight line, by picking two points on the line and plugging their coordinate values into the gradient formula. This is the gradient formula here. These little numbers here next to the y and x's just relate to the coordinates that you've picked. So x1 and y1 come from the first coordinate you've picked, whereas x2 and y2 come from the second coordinate that you've picked. Let's have a look at an example of how this works. So in this example, we need to find the gradient of the yellow line above. So this line here, we're gonna find the gradient. So the first thing we need to do is we need to pick two points on the line and write down their coordinates. So let's go ahead and pick two points on that line. I have actually already marked out the points I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick this one and I'm gonna pick this one here. So this point here, this has the coordinate one and six because this point relates to when x is equal to one and when y is equal to six. If you don't know how I've got to this coordinate or don't really understand what I mean by coordinates, then I'd suggest checking out my video on graph section one because I've gone over it there. Okay, and this second point, this has coordinate minus two and six because it is the point where x is equal to minus two and y is equal to minus six. Okay, so now we have our two points. I like to write these down so I know what my y1, y2, x1 and x2 values will take in the gradient formula. So here we go. I have x1 and y1 and I've picked this coordinate, the one and the six coordinate, this guy here. And the x2 and y2 coordinates, minus two and minus six, which is this coordinate here. Now that we've got our values of x1, y1, x2 and y2, we can go ahead and plug these into the gradient formula here. So here I've gone ahead and done that. I've got y1 as 6, I've got y2 as minus 6, I've got x1 as 1 and I've got x2 as minus 2. So we get 6 minus minus 6 which becomes 6 plus 6 and we've got 1 minus minus 2, which becomes 1 plus 2. Therefore, we get the fraction 12 over 3, which reduces to 4. So we found the gradient, we found that m is equal to 4, i.e. the gradient of this yellow line is 4. So the equation for this line looks like this up here, and there would be a 4 in place of this m. Right, let's go on to our final section, finding the equation of a straight line. In order to find the equation, for any straight line, you have to follow these three steps. The first, you need to find the gradient of the line. We've literally just gone over the gradient formula and how to find gradients. You pick two points, you find the coordinates, you plug those coordinates into the gradient formula, and then you get the value for m, which is the gradient. Step two is find the y-intercept. This is the value of c. This is really easy. All you have to do is look at your line on the graph and see where that line crosses the y-axis. Where it crosses the y-axis is the value of c. And the final step is to take your value of m that you found in step one and take your value of c that you found in step two and plug them into the straight line equation that is this guy up here. So let's just have a look at an example of that. In this example, find the equation for the red line on the graph to the right using the coordinates indicated by the black dots. So we're finding the equation for this red line and we're going to use these two dots here. So first step, we need to find the gradient m. We know from the previous section that we've just gone over that in order to find m, we need to pick two points. Well, these have already been set out for us, they're these. We need to write down their coordinates and then we plug them into the gradient formula, which is this guy here. So let's do that. This point here, relates to the point where x is equal to minus 6 and y is equal to minus 4. Therefore, the coordinate is minus 6, minus 4. This point here relates to the point where x is 6 and y is minus 2. So this is the coordinate for that point. Therefore, we have our two coordinates and we can write these down. We've got x1 and y1 as minus 6 and minus 4, and we've got x2 and y2 as 6 and minus 2. It doesn't actually matter which way around you write these. You could have 
this coordinate as x1 and y1 and you could have this coordinate as x1 and x2, it doesn't matter. Now that we've got our coordinates, we need to put them into the gradient formula. When they're put in the gradient formula, we get minus 4 minus minus 2, which is minus 4 plus 2, and we get minus 6 minus 6. The numerator becomes minus 2 and the denominator becomes minus 12, which then gives 1 6. So m is equal to 1 over 6. The gradient of this red line is 1 over 6. Right, our next step is to find the y-intercept, i.e. we need to see where this line here crosses the y-axis. This is really easy. You can see that this red line crosses the y-axis at the point minus 3. So we can write that down. C is equal to minus 3. Now the final step, put the values of m and c that we've just found into the equation for a straight line. So we know this is the equation for a straight line. We know that m is 1 over 6 and we know that c is minus 3. Therefore, we should be able to write the equation for this red line here. And here we go. We've got y is equal to 1 over 6x minus 3. This is the equation for this red line here. Now you know all that. I think now is a good point to test your knowledge on this section by pausing the video and trying out these five questions here and then coming back to the video to compare your answers and workings to mine. Cheers for watching.